Hello again, students and families. Today's lesson is all about shape patterns. Go ahead and get your paper and copy down the title for this lesson. Pause the video if you need to. Let's remember our unit learning goal is about how to find patterns to help you with factors and multiples. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how you can create and describe patterns, specifically shape patterns. Let's remember what we learned. Look at this pattern. What is the number pattern? Do you see that the pattern increases by the rule add 2 and then add 4 making this a two-step pattern. What would the next three numbers in the pattern be? Did you say 20, 22, and 26? If so, Great job. Today, we're going to look at shape patterns instead of number patterns. We can find patterns in shape in fabric, pottery, rugs, wall coverings, even buildings. You can see patterns based on the shape, the size, the position, the color, or even the number of figures. Look at this pattern. Sophia will use the pattern below to make a wallpaper border. What might be the next three figures in the pattern? This pattern is a repeating pattern. The first shape has one red trapezoid and one green triangle. The second shape has one red trapezoid and three green triangles. That would be our pattern unit, and then that pattern unit repeats red trapezoid, green triangle, red trapezoid, three green triangles. After a red trapezoid and three green triangles, the pattern would repeat, so the next three shapes would include a red trapezoid and one green triangle, followed by a red trapezoid and three green triangles, and a red trapezoid again with one green triangle. Repeating patterns are not that difficult to identify. The more difficult patterns to identify are growing patterns. This is a growing pattern. Look at the figures. Figure 1 has one circle. Figure 2 has four circles. Figure 3 has nine circles. And figure 4 has 16 circles. What do you think the next figure is going to look like? I can see that from figure 1 to figure 2, they added a row on the outside. And from figure 2 to figure 3, they did the same. And from figure 3 to figure 4, they did the same. So drawing the fifth figure would say, would have me draw the figure 4 picture, four circles and four rows of them. and then add a row on the outside, making five rows of five circles. Describing this pattern is more difficult. When I'm describing a growing pattern, I need to think about describing it by the figure number, 
and then the shapes included. So I see figure one has one circle. And then they added three circles to get to figure two where there were four circles. For figure nine, there's nine circles, which is more than adding three. Figure four has 16 circles. Since adding doesn't continue past that first step, I have to try another pattern. I can try a multiplication pattern. Figure one has one circle. Since figure two has four circles, I have to think, what can I do to the number two to get the number four? I can either add two or multiply by two. Look at figure one. If I add two, do I get one circle? No, I don't. If I look at figure one, if I multiply by two, do I get one circle? That still doesn't work. So let's look at figure two again and think. I, figure two has two and I can multiply it by two. What can I do to figure one if I start with the one and get a one? I can add zero, but that pattern won't work for figure two. What if I said figure one and I multiply that by one, then I get one. So for figure three, I would think, well, what if I multiply figure three times that number, three? Does that give me nine? And it does. It works for shape four, two. Four times four is 16. And in figure five, five times five is 25. So describing this pattern, I'm going to say in words, that I want to multiply the figure number by itself. I can write that mathematically by saying figure, let's use F for figure, times figure. Written mathematically, this becomes my rule. The rule is important because I can use it to figure out any shape in this pattern. If I wanted to figure out how many circles would be in the ninth shape, drawing those nine shapes would take me a long time. But since I know it would be figure nine, I can use my rule and say that nine times nine is 81. So the ninth shape would have 81 circles. Let's look at another example. Here we have Marisol making a pattern with blocks. What is the missing shape? I see shape one is a triangle, shape three is a pentagon, four is a hexagon, and five is a heptagon. Shape one has three sides. Shape three has five sides. Shape four has six sides. And shape five has seven sides. I can figure out the shape for missing in number two by using the pattern that goes across my shapes here because they appear to go up by one. Three, four, five, six, seven. So my missing shape would have four sides. A four-sided shape would be a square. 
Now, remember on our circles pattern, we wanted to describe the pattern in a way that we could use it to figure out any shape. If I wanted to figure out the 11th shape in this pattern by saying it increases by one, I'm gonna have to count out till the 11th shape. So instead, I'm going to try to describe my pattern from the shape number to the number of sides. If I look at one, to get three, I can say I would add two. Does that work? Is two plus two four? It is. And three plus two is five. Four plus two is six. And five plus two is seven. So in this case, my pattern is going to be to add two to the shape number to get the number of sides. I can write that in words. But I can also write that mathematically. Since I'm talking about shape number, I'm going to use an S and I'm going to write the rule mathematically as S plus 2. Using this rule for shape 11, I would do 11 plus 2, which would tell me that shape 11 would have 13 sides. Now look at this pattern. How many squares would be the next shape? And what's the rule? Remember to describe the rule by the shape number and the number of squares. Do you have an answer for how many squares? Do you have an idea for the rule? Let's see. If I call the first picture shape one, I see it has one square and shape two has three squares. Shape three has six squares. And shape four has 10 squares. Let's look for the pattern. As I look at this pattern, I see that shape one stays with shape two and I add two to the bottom. Shape two is still there in shape three, but I add a row of three to the bottom. Shape four has shape three with a row of four on the bottom. So my pattern could be described by saying it's the previous amount, in this case I could say it's one, plus the shape number, two, and that gives me how many squares I have, three. Three plus three gives me six, and six plus four gives me 10. So 10 plus my next shape, which would be five, would give me my total squares in this shape, which would be 15 squares. I can describe the rule in words easily by saying the number of squares in the previous shape plus the shape number. Let's look at this pattern. We want to know how many squares and triangles would be in shape 6. Watch for this type of question. This is the distractor. People will normally 
make the error to tell how many shapes would be in, in shape 5 instead of shape 6. This is where finding the rule mathematically will help. So let's compare. Go ahead and copy down the numbers for this pattern, not the pictures. So in house 1, there are three total shapes, two squares and a triangle. In house 2, I see six total shapes. And in house 3, I see nine total shapes. On your paper, I would write that as house 1, and S for shapes, house 1, three shapes, house 2, six shapes, house 3, nine shapes, house 4 then has 12 shapes. Let's look for the pattern then going from the house to the number of shapes. I can say that 1 plus 2 is 3. Is 2 plus 2 6? It's not. So my rule can't be plus 2. Let's try again. I can say 1 times 3 is 3. Is 2 times 3 6? That works. Let's try it again. Is 3 times 3 9? Again, that rule works. House 4, 4 times 3, does give me 12. So I can describe the rule in words by saying that house number times 3 is the number of shapes. Now, I can write my rule mathematically, and I'm going to use H since my shapes are houses. I'm going to say house times 3. Now, to answer the question, how many rules will be in shape 6, I'm going to put 6 for my house number, and I'm going to multiply it by 3, and that will give me 18. So there's going to be 18 shapes in house number 6. Can you decide this pattern? I'm going to give you a hint. This rule does have two steps. See if the colors of the squares can help you find the two steps. Pause the video and see what you can come out with. Try writing the numbers to show the shape and the number of squares and see if you can find the rule and how many would be in shape number five. I see in shape one there are five squares. In shape two there are nine squares. In shape three, there are 13 squares. For this pattern, I gave you the hint. It was a two-step rule from shape one to get my five squares, I need to take two steps. And what I see is that each shape has one purple square in the middle that doesn't change. That shape is always there. 
That's the shape that makes this a two-step rule. So if I take out that purple square and I think of just the outside squares on shape one, there would be four. And then in shape two, without the purple square, there'd be eight. So one plus three, no, because two plus three isn't going to get me to the eight blue squares. What if I did one times four? That gives me four blue squares, and then I add the purple one. Is two times four will give me the eight blue squares, and then I add one, and that gives me nine. For shape three, three times four gives me the 12 blue squares, plus one for the purple one, and that's where my 13 comes. So this rule, described in words, is shape number times four plus one for that purple square. Now I can write that rule mathematically, and I'm going to use S for shape, and I'm just going to write S times four. I'm going to put that in parentheses, and then my plus one. So since my rule is S times four plus one, I'm going to put in the shape they're asking me to find, number five. I'm going to do five times four plus one. I know five times four is 20, and 20 plus one is 21. So shape five would have 21 squares. Go ahead and copy this example onto your paper so that you have it for later. We've reached the end of tonight's presentation. And so it's... Go online and complete the check problems for this lesson. We will review those problems first thing tomorrow in class. Have a good night.